So you your phone should be on silent. It's a great morning to everyone. Hope everyone is great this morning. Uh, this is, this is um, Public Organization Theories, and we are told to form an organization. Uh, we came up with a charitable organization, and we got a name. This is All for Love Uganda, and we abbreviated it to AFLO. A A L F U. I'm going to take you through in the introduction of, of our organization. Um, and before before we, we before we got up with our organization, we came up with a group of hearted people who felt love for Ugandans who are suffering outside there, and we felt need to come up with something that is going to provide something for, for that group of people. All for Life Uganda, or AFRO, is a non-governmental organization which came into existence in 2018 by a group of five good-hearted people. Its existence follows the lives of people living disadvantaged lives. It has, it has its headquarters in Kona District. The organization was formed to give hope to orphans, needy, disabled, and vulnerable children throughout the country. This is done through creating awareness on children's health, livelihood skills, and training members on issues concerning health in our communities. As our introduction says, we are dealing with the whole country, for Ugandans. Our target, we are targeting Ugandans at, at large. We are, we, are, we, we are not limited to a certain group of people, like maybe Mukono or Ginger only, those people. We are dealing with Whoever, whoever we feel is supposed to be given in a hand of helping and you, a Ugandan you have a problem, we, you're qualified. Our, our audience is the needy, the orphaned, sick, disabled, and vulnerable children. And the services offered, we have sponsorship to children until university. Our states, all requirements of registering a non-government organization in Uganda we have a different group of people to discuss that part. Thank you. My name is Nakiru Laki Sarafina. I'm going to take you through the steps or the requirements of registering a non-government organization in Uganda. And I'm going to begin with uh, a letter of recommendation written by the local council, the LC1 chairperson to say, the LC3 chairperson, and the resident district commissioner. They should each endorse their signatures and stamps. Before you start up with an organization, that's the first step you're going through. And then the next is the organization should have written the recommendation of two recommenders who should each write separately recommending the organization. Now, this one, you should have two people. Two people. These are people of important positions, maybe. And these people should write different recommendation letters about the organization. So that when they present it to the register of companies, yeah, it gives them a go ahead to register your company. The next one is uh, the organization should have a work plan of its activities to be carried out for the first year of the, f of the term of operation and have a budget as well. So in order for these people to allow your company to be registered, you should have a work plan displaying all those activities that you would like to carry out in your organization and also a budget. You should have a budget attached to these activities. The next we have is the organization should have two copies of the constitution always. I should have a provision in its specific purposes of which the funds are to be utilized. So basically, these two copies should not only be hard copy, but it should also have the soft copy. However much when you take your, your company to register, they may require you to carry with you two hard copy constitutions of your organization. The next one is the NGO should have an organizational chart showing its leadership. 
Uh, they can't register your organization if you don't have an organization chart structure. In other words, how will you be able to execute your duties if you don't have people taking each role in your organization? So every person should have a role, and the hierarchy should be from the top to the bottom. Um, Take me back, please. Every indigenous NGO is to pay 40,000 shillings only as a registration fee. Take me. And the next one is, every organization is to fill Form A, which should be duly completed and signed by at least two promoters. These promoters are the owners of the organization. And the, this Form A um, involves the name of the organization, the amount of money that you pay to register the organization. You can research more about that form. You can see what is involved in it. The organization should bring all its application papers on Spring Manila cover. This is the most formal uh, cover you can ever use. It is a Manila, not this hard box paper. And then the cover file should have um, the name of the organization printed in capital letters, the address and telephone contacts, in case you are required to clear before the NGO board. The next person can come and take you through the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up here, Naomi. Um, the organization should write a letter to the secretary NGO board specifying the area of the operation. Um, here, you have to write a letter like showing the place you're going to have the organization carrying its activities, like that place. And then you make sure that it's a visible, physical place. Like, because we talk about Mokono, that's where we're going to schedule our place. And uh, every orga organization should reserve its name with the Registrar Gen General's Office at the Ministry of Justice. This is to make sure that no organization will use your name <coughs> and the name of the organization is free to be used by you. Like, I could call this a copyright where no one has to use the name of the organization you've come up with and you have a right to sue the organization that copies your name. If an organization has a foreigner working with it, it should read section 13 of the Non-Governmental Act 2006 and the re relevant regulations. Okay, like if you have a foreigner who wants to work within your organization, you can ask that person to portray their papers. We talk about the passports and then the visa that lets them into the country. And the NGO board sits once every month. Any, regist any registering NGO should expect its certificate of incorporation after a month of lodging its papers, but it's not a guarantee. Like, for an organization to take place, you must have that, the certificate of incorporation that allows you to carry out the activities of an organization. All lawyers, consultants are advised to come with at least one of the officials of the organization being presented. Every organization must, in addition to other requirements, have a dissolution clause. A dissolution is like a permanent closure. Eh? Like, okay, dissolution clause is when we decide when the organization is going to close, then what are you going to do with the assets? Are you going to distribute them to the members of the board or you're going to give them out to someone else? When an organization closes down, the NGO board should be informed. Um, here, let's say that people within the organization that are governing the organization will have to let the board know that the organization has come to an end. So thank you. And I have my colleague. Okay, I'm going to continue with the introduction. Good morning. My name is Nasirumbi Juliet. We have the structure. We have the board of directors. And the board of directors are the one who, who formed the what? The organization. Under the board of directors, we have the executive, the executive directors, 
then the advisors under the executive directors we have the administrative manager the communication manager the program manager then under the ones I've mentioned, we have the finance officer, the public relations, then the project assistant. We have the membership coordinator, the training officer, and the consultants and field staff. Nachibuka Harriet, and I'm going to talk about the constitution of All for Love Uganda. Uh, just like any organization, we must have a constitution that governs our day-to-day -day activities. So Article 1, Article 1 talks about the name and address of the organization. The organization shall be called All for Love Uganda, like the board, of the board members suggested. The organization shall be registered in accordance with the laws and guidelines of the Republic of Uganda, the NGO Act, caption 2007, and other statute. Those acts are going to govern our constitution. Since it's an NGO, so obviously we had to use the word, the National Non-Government Organization Act. The organization shall be independent, non-profit making body, non-partisan, and shall keep within its mandate in accordance with the provision of the constitution and other rules and regulations made. Here, we are not attached to any political party, so any hope is welcome, whether you're from NRM, FDC, whichever, as long as you're, you're for a good cause, you're welcome. We're not aiming at profit making, we're, we're just humanitarians who want to improve the lives of needy Ugandans. The abbreviation AFLU shall be accepted as the original abbreviation. So. No one should lie you that All for Love Uganda has a different, a different abbreviation apart from this one, AFLU. Then Article 2, the Location and Organizations Office. As the board members, they suggested the headquarters would be in Mukono District for reasons best known to the members. And we hope to extend our services to other districts. We won't stop only in Mukono because we believe there are needy people elsewhere. Article 3, the vision, the mission, and the goal of the organization. Well, All for Love Uganda has a vision and a what? A mission. So our vision is giving hope to the orphans, needy, disabled, and vulnerable children in the current situation. In Uganda today, there are very many orphans due to wars, uh, unavoidable circumstances, and those children need, need a home, need hope. So we came up with this organization to give hope to those people. Some of them are really bright, but they can't go to school because there's no one to give them a hand. The needy, these are people, they have parents, but then their parents can't support them. So we also want to take them in, the disabled and vulnerable. Those people are always discriminated in society, but as All for Love Uganda, as our title states, we're doing it for love. We don't care how you look like, where you come from, if you, you, you're amputated or what, we're just doing it for love. and want to give you hope in, in the community. Then our goal, to, the best to be the best charity organization, providing remarkable charitable services both nationally and internationally. Right now, it's still nationally because we first want to concentrate on our country. May, w this, this came about because most of the charitable organizations are actually funded by international people, and we feel like it's time for us Ugandans to do something good for our own country. We shouldn't wait for International people to always come and give us what? Support. Yet we, ca we have good people who can take up that. And as time goes on, we believe we'll grow and we also extend a hand to other countries, the DRC, Congo, Somalia, those other countries that are what? International. Thank you very much. My colleague should start from there. Good morning. Um, as we've, we've all been looking at our organization, All for Love Uganda, and I'm going to talk about the objectives of the organization. Uh, our objectives specifically, our organization was looking at having a tremendous generation to come. 
So we were looking basically, generally, our aim was to bring that young generation to come and I mean, be a, for, I mean, a, a, a strong generation that is going to I mean, support our country and be able to, to stand. Even though we are not there, they will still enable our country to carry on and be able to remain as it is, I mean, to be modernized. So we were looking at to create awareness among children in communities on matters concerning health, I mean children's health, basically through meeting out, reaching out to communities like within Mokono, telling them how basically, though they are vulnerable and needy, but how can they maintain themselves? I mean, how can they improve on their health? Because various families and various parents have, I mean, left, our, left their responsibilities of taking care of their children since they, some of them are not able to take care of themselves. Maybe someone has given birth to a child that is ha not having some parts of the body. Some parents seem to, I mean, take time to accept those children and own them and take responsibility. So our aim is to create awareness and then to ensure home hygiene water source maintenance, training members all preventative measures concerning health related problems in schools and in communities, starting with the children, basically to teach them how can they live a healthy life as them, then how can they live in a community without having a low esteem in them, and then how can they keep the environment and how can they maintain the things that we are going to give to them? Because we are, we are aiming at reaching out to them, providing them with scholastic materials, providing them with education, providing them with good water sources. So how are they going to maintain them after them attaining them? I mean, after them getting them. And then to ensure that these children are retained in school so as to reduce on the poverty levels for the future generation. I mean, to keep them in school, we, we let them to know the importance of them being in school and what are they going to have after they've gone through school so that they can be able to stand on their own and be important people in our generation, I mean, in the generation to come. Then the employee qualification, that is Article 5, employees must have must hold a degree or a diploma in the field applied for with higher offices demanding expertise or years of experience this i mean when we talk about employee qualifications we are talking about the people that are going to operate with us that are going to come and help us within operating different activities in various departments um, we were looking at having people who have gone to school, people who have knowledge, who have acquired knowledge and know what they are doing. Uh, we cannot, of course, bring someone who ended in P4 to be that. I mean, someone who was in P7 to come and be our executive, I mean, the CEO of the organization, maybe to come and run finance in the organization and they, yet they don't have any skill or knowledge about it. Then we're also looking at the applicants must have a national identity card, LC1 letter or a police letter, indicating where one is coming from. Of course, before someone comes to join our organization, this person should have identity. We, you should have to know where are you coming from? What is your background before you come joining us? And what is your intention? through identification, and then high priorities given to Ugandans. Mostly, we are looking forward to work with our fellow Ugandans. And then, Article 6, Management and Structure. Uh, LF, A AFLU shall give the following membership. In our structure, as it has been read earlier, in the structure we have the board, we have the management team, the professional staff, and the support staff. And Please take me. The functions of those people, the, the board, the, pow the functions and the powers of the board, is, it shall be the supreme body of the organization. It shall be responsible for reviewing and passing policies in the organization in case the policies have been formulated. For they are the ones to approve a policy to start working within the organization. And then, reviewing performance of the senior staff or any recruitment of the senior staff that may be needed. Of course, here, they're the ones to 
say, okay, here we need someone to work in this position. We are missing. We need a, a hand in this position. So they are the ones to take us through and also evaluate the performance of the existing employees within the organization. And then they are to mobilize the resources on the behalf of the institution. Uh, we are looking forward as the organization starts operating to continue soliciting for funds from other maybe willing institutions that are willing to come and give a hand. They may be the coming from outside countries. So the role of the board members is to solicit for resources within the organization. And then the powers and the roles of the management, it is to comp comp comprise, it comprises of the heads, departments, program, and shall take the role of directing, managing, decision making, and policy implementation, then reporting all the affairs of the organization. The management shall be giving orders, shall be directing. We've all studied of the functions of management in public administration. So they shall be directing, they shall be planning, they will be carrying out, I mean spearheading the budgeting processes, they shall be giving the final decisions and the final says within the organization. Then the duties and the responsibilities of the staff is there will be the, there will be the core in implementation of the policies that have been put in place or the activities. If the board members have come up with the policies, the duties for the for the staff is to implement, put, put into action the policies. Let me welcome my colleague to come and continue from there. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Benom Shajoshua, and I'm going to take you through Article 7, which talks about the discipline of the members. Uh, the first article is about the executive committee shall have power to suspend any member of the organization if such a member conducts himself in a manner prejudicial the interest of the organization. Here we are talking about uh, in case of any member who has a relationship with uh, these, ch these children uh, who, who mistreats them in any manner the committee will be able to resolve such is uh, incidences and work upon the issues. Uh, the duration of such suspension shall be able, shall be at the description of the executive committee, provided it shall be reasonable in circumstances. We are talking about the powers of the executive. Hereby, the power, the executive shall be in position to suspend or expel a member in case one acts out of control contrary to the Constitution. Uh, the suspended member shall have the right to appeal to the General Assembly within three weeks from the date of the decision of the Executive Committee. Okay, well, as you are in, you are in wrong, we are, you are given chance or you are at liberty to appeal to the General Assembly within three weeks from the date of the decision so that your matters can be worked upon. The General Assembly shall have powers to reinstate, further suspend, or expel expel such a person. Uh, in case of disagreements with the decision of the General Assembly, the aggrieved party shall be at liberty to petition the district committee based de uh, department or the courts of law. Uh, as you understand, the NGO is a legal entity. So wh when uh, an individual is not in agreement with a decision, he can be able to go to the courts of law and address his issues. And these issues can be worked upon there. Uh, another article is about meetings. Uh, as, a, as an organization, we always have, a me uh, we always have meetings for, uh, to conduct a follow-up. The board meeting shall be held every Monday and Friday during morning hours to review the organizational process. The draft and review policies review staff performance, formulate and pass decisions. These meetings are held timely in, mm, in order to, to plan and evaluate the performance of the workers at various levels. These meetings help us conduct the different activities. Maybe we are planning about outreaches in different countries 
and the children's welfare and at large. Every end of year, the organization shall conduct a reflection meeting that will bring together partners, staff management, and about review the progress of the organization. So this is done in that there is accounting of resources, uh, and we see uh, we we make a follow up on what we have done and and what we have failed to achieve. Here, every person is at liberty to to air out his views according to the progress of the organization, and we see uh, on the way forward on what we can do and what we can achieve in the next years. Article 9 talks about finances and how to obtain. Yeah. My name is Nandaula Shakila. I'm going to talk about finances and how to obtain money. Individual donations, for example, rich men like Brian White may come up and be like, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to give us some funds in form of money, materials. Then we have got the donations and grants from uh, USA, UK, those things. Then money raised from fundraising, for example, from churches, mosques. These funds hope can help the can help us provide these kids with uh, needful materials like scholastic, scholastic materials like pens, books. How it will be spent, offering scholarship to these students. For example, we shall offer them with free education, provide them with scholastic materials like pens, books, then building orphanages, extending medical care to the needy at a free charge. How, who is responsible for overseeing the budget, the programs manager, the finance manager, financial year, the financial year of the organization shall, fo shall follow the calendar, i.e., shall run from. Then we have got the banking. The organization shall have the operate bank accounts in lawful and licensed institution banks as determined by the board members. For example, this can be uh, in the Stand Big Bank, then the organization. The organization management through finance de department shall manage the funds of the organization through constant approval and recommendations of the board, the head of the organization, the director of finance, and the finance office shall be principal signatories for the accounts. For the purpose of the bank transactions, a check will be cleared when it holds at least two signatories with the head of the organization being the principal. Then, I'm going to talk about at Cotain, the seal. The organization shall have an official seal that shall bear its logo and shall be kept by the Secretary. This can, for example, be a stamp. The organization, including legal documents and official documents, approved by the board and shall affix the seal to all documents. Let me have another person talk about it. So I'm going to talk about amendment of the Constitution. A member willing to pro wishing to propose wishing to propose any amendment to this Constitution shall give notice of such proposal by sending it to the Secretary of the Ex Executive Committee at least two months before the meeting of the General Assembly. That one is self-explanatory. Uh, on receipt on receipt of such proposal. The secretary shall circulate copies of the same to all members. That means all members should be on board. 
then an amendment shall be affected by a majority vote of two thirds of members present but entitled to vote. Then Article 12, which is the dissolution, a notice of the intention to dissolve the organization shall be served to the board that shall later notify all the relevant partners four months before the meeting at which it is proposed to move the, mo to move the motion. Then the property of the organization shall be passed on to any charity organization with similar aspirations to those of or for Love Uganda at the time of dissolution. Yeah. So our organization, All for Love, looked up to the Lutheran World Federation to come up with our constitution. The Lutheran World Federation was founded originally after World War II, uh, but in Uganda, it said in 1967, me and Petronella and the rest of the group were, okay, we had the chance to talk to one of uh, the workers in the Lutheran World Federation. Uh, he told <coughs> us originally they used to, their aim was to help vulnerable people, which is the same thing our organization is trying to do. Then now they major with refugees, they have um, an interesting number of refugee camps in Uganda, about four. And yeah, they, what? Uh, they have set up schools. Uh, they are, of course, their headquarters is the Ecumenical Center in Genovia, Switzerland. Um, they, um, yeah, of course, their structure, will be, our structure is also based on theirs. Uh, the Lutheran World Federation, in Uganda, they get their aid from churches because they are a church-founded organization. They get their aid from like the, Dan the Danish church, the Finnish church, and um, Alka Church America, and, uh, and also from the UN because they are an affiliate, like they work for the UN. And so Petrona is going to finish. Petronella. So as All for Love, we look up to, we offer the same services as Lutheran World Federation. And we have achievements, they have achievements and challenges. I'm going to give you some of the achievements and the challenges. Uh, they have successfully set up refugee camps. Uh, they built about three in Uganda at the moment. They built boreholes. Uh, they changed the lives of hundreds of families through funding. They funding them financially in terms of material things like food, uh, clothing, and non-materials like education. They built schools like Parolinia and Nzei. They taught vulnerable people uh, modern farming practices. And then they also have challenges. Uh, refugees, we have the challenge of refugees coming back for double time, whereby they get money, they escape. When they get money, they escape to back to their country, then they come back and register in another camp. Uh, another challenge is uh, donors end up pulling out when they discover that their money is being embezzled. Then we have also corruption. In case of recruitment, when they're supposed to recruit five accountants, they recruit three instead. Then, then the remaining two, they end up using the money. Then some field officers are corrupt. They give them, say, for example, 50 jerry cans to give to the, the vulnerable people, and then they give them, say, 20, and end up selling the rest. Yeah, then we have political interference, where political heads of areas uh, are set up, political heads of areas where camps are set up uh, services to be provided to non-vulnerable people due to friendships and relations. Then we have violence. For example, in Karamoja, uh, they visited Karamoja to help the people there, but they happened to be a bit hostile, and they ended up beating these people in Luka district. Now, since All for Love sort of offers this, they offer similar services, yeah, and they have sort of the same challenges, so we are aiming as an organization at building, at bettering, every organization obviously has challenges. So we're aiming at bettering our organization. Thank you, Thank you very much uh, uh, for the presentation. We are closed for this one. Now, very quickly, I think uh, Petronella and Apologio 
really bring the discussions live because you use really the, the examples of uh, what you got from the field. I think that was very good. Many of you are very hypothetical though. The presentation is 15 minutes. You guys went for more than 15 minutes. Like, that is not acceptable. Each presentation is 15 minutes. Cut on the many things you have to say. And many of you are reading. I'm, I'm taking note of all of you. And you get penalized. Don't be verbose. Don't talk so much. This, we don't have time. 15 minutes each. Come and be very laconic. Now I'm using terms all of you are getting lost. Now this is, this, I hope we are, we are off now. Eh? Yeah, good. Um, don't take more than few. This is very annoying. You're taking longer. You guys are taking almost half an hour. Talking, and then you're reading from your slides. Next group, please. Thank you so much for the first group. Um, next group coming. Wait. Quickly. Next group coming. Thank you so much. Let's have a big clap for them. You should remember we, we are on, we are live. Everything you're doing here is, uh, is being recorded. So let's be very organized. They're saying it is live. Good morning, guys. Uh, this is Home of Hope Orphanage Organization. In short, is it's Homo. Uh, that's our logo. The the house structure is showing the the as in the way we are supporting the kids and uh, that that <coughs> structure down there, like a human being, it's like a tree. We are the tree, our, we, our group is like the tree and those are like leaves and uh, we are supporting the children. <laughs> and our background, we are a non-profitable organization formed in uh, 2015, located along it towers. In 2018, Home of Hope Orphanage organization grew once again as it faced a critical nation need for additional shelter space for children fleeing from the street life. Our vision, our vision for every child, our prayer for every heart. Morning, class. Uh, 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 Our mission statement is help a child raise a nation. Our objective is one to extend love to unloved children. Uh, we our, our aim is to make sure that those children who are not who are neglected are loved. Uh, to put a child on each child's face, to put a smile on each child's face. We find that whenever we get these children to our camp, we are making them to smile for a better future. To empower children, the skills. Uh, these skills, uh, we make them like tailoring, so that when, 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 when they reach the age of 18 years old, we disperse them. Someone is able to do some work out there. Uh, skills like mending shoes for girls, uh, making hair, then uh, provide clean water, food, and security to children. 
uh, reasons for the creation of this organization, form of work, uh, to provide food and clothing to the affected children. These affected children could be like uh, in well torn areas, like Sudan. Those children who come from Sudan, they are in those refugees of Germany, you find that uh, they have no food, they have no clothes. Yeah. Uh, to provide security to them, the security in terms of uh, gazetting them, putting them in a camp, so that they are together there to accommodate them. We put like tents, we build some structures uh, to educate them. We have, a, we have a school, and actually we educate them, we have a school, materials, mattresses, uh, shoes, books, yeah. Yeah, this logo is like, you see the hands, the, the picture is like someone is standing strong to support the children. That's why you're seeing someone is raising all their hands that I've really given up, I want to support the children. Yeah. Yes. Next member to, to come and continue from here. Thank you. Um, good morning to you all. I'm Mumba Maria Nisha. Now, forgive me for referring to my notes from time to time, but the structure, the roles of the different members of the organization is in the constitution and we did not want to affect your concentration. Eh? Yeah, so the structure of Home of Hope organization, we have the executive director who is in charge of the motivational role and mentorship of the various individuals in the organization. <coughs> and this the executive director is meant to chair meetings from time to time and in case he or she is not available, we have the assistant executive director who plays actually a bigger role. Most of the programs, activities going to be carried out within the orphanage will be directed by that person. Then we have the human resource manager who, who is in charge of developing a management, a management style that can run the organization successfully and be able to meet our goals and um, yeah, bring a smile on the orphan's faces. Yeah, then we have a legal advisor. This person, of course, legal concerns the law. So this person must be well versed with the law, be able to point us in the right direction. What legal things should we know? The acts, the constitutions, what are we supposed to know as an organization that is in charge of the orphanages? What are we supposed to do? So in case need arises, the advice is very important. Yeah, then we have the monitoring and evaluation officer. This person is supposed to monitor each and every activity within the organization. If probably at a certain time T, we are going to have probably outreaches and we are going to look for these various orphans wherever they are. This person is going to monitor how did the activity go? How was it? Was it successful? Did this and this go well? Those kind of things. Yeah. Then we have the coordinator. Of course, we shall be based in a particular location, but we may have branches in the near future. This coordinator is meant to coordinate the various activities, coordinate the various um, branches we shall have. Yeah, and then we have the finance officer who is responsible for the financial health of the organization. The person is in charge of how the operations in the organization are going to run financially, where we shall get the money. It is his or her duty to know and tell us, shall we have the funds for such and such an activity? Are we going to be able to run this? Shall we have the food for the orphans? Shall we have such and such from various investors and all that? Yeah, then we have the probation officer. Probation officer is basically someone who, who, um, someone who is related to the law, works hand in hand with those legal advisors and officers. This person, of course we shall have orphans. Some of them may be, um, probably offenders, they may be thieves and all that. So this person is supposed to evaluate them, get to know their history, monitor them, and represent them in court if, if need be. I hope you're understanding that. Huh? Yeah. yeah, then we have the assistant legal advisor stroke the public, public relations officer. This person is meant to assist the legal advisor and the public relations bit of it, they're supposed to represent the organization. And, be, and publicize it. Then we have the welfare officer. This person basically needs to provide various anonymities 
for the various orphans and activities in the organization, such as the shelter, the beddings, the food, yeah, and such, to make someone's life comfortable and obviously give hope to those who are hopeless. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to talk about the source of funds. My name is Ainza Christine. And just to summarize what is there, mm, Home of Hope Orphanage, 80% of our funding comes from our own businesses. We have industries, we have like industries like Darling that makes braids. This. And then we have farms, like we make our own kids, our own children to go and to go and do farming, and from that we sell and get money to support them. And then the other, we have individuals, corporation and foundation from abroad, like we have sponsors for these children. And then the other one is that the remainder comes from government and multilateral agencies, especially Save the Children in Uganda. Like there are these agencies that are formed to just cater for the issues of countries. And then in addition to, in addition, we also have ca cash contributions from the members of the organization. Here, what do I talk about? Like within the organization, we have, we have a circle as the officials within. So we collect the money and we agree that maybe 50% will go to the children and then the rest shall be our saving. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Daniel Eboyo. I'm uh, from Home of Hope Organization. So these are the following activities we're offering. Um, training children and empowering them with skills. Like we get, we get to know the children. We get to know the skills they're well versed with. Maybe like those who have talents. Talk about maybe like soccer. However, also other skills like maybe tailoring or computer skills. So we come to them. We we get to know their skills and we come and and see how to you know impact like like how they can achieve that then the next is educating them probably like sponsoring them with their education in schools around or maybe different institutions then renovation of old facilities to provide shelter probably like uh, we get to know like those living uh, in uh, like houses that are doing so bad that need renovation maybe like the roofs so we come and renovate them so that to make their lives better then our community outreach, we come out to the community and get to know their problems and see how we can solve them up. Then campaigns on abuse of children's rights. Like we get to know the children's rights and talk about it and see how to, you know, like solve them up. Thank you very much. Good morning. Kamuni Allen, I'm going to talk about the work ethics. We have discipline, teamwork, professionalism, determination and respectfulness, integrity and sense of responsibility, then dress code. Discipline, at our workplaces, if us ourselves we are not disciplined, then the orphans that we are looking after, they also won't be disciplined. We have to first discipline ourselves so that we can teach them the morals. Then teamwork and professionalism, <coughs> We have to work together, hand in hand, cooperate, and be united. <coughs> then determination and respectfulness. <coughs> we have to respect ourselves, and before that, I have to respect myself so that other people can respect me. So that even when we bring in the orphans, they can also respect us and see what we are telling them. Then integrity and sense of responsibility. We have to take our responsibilities. We have to know what to do according to our professionalism. Then dress code, we have to be decent so that they can also follow us. Good morning. I'm Naiga Shamim from Home of Hope Orphanage. I'm going to talk about the future expectations. Uh, bright child and skilled children. As a boy said, he said we are going to nature our children to get skills, like computer skills, we train them different things. So we, we have that expectation of re, like having that 
child with those skills. So clean access to water and food. Uh, we get those children from dirty places, the ones that we, we are going to care about. So our expectations are we have to clean them, give them good clothes, provide them with good water so that they can feel a difference between where we are going to take them and where we got them from. Uh, another point that is not projected here, we look forward to, to having a, a, an organization that is God-fearing. For example, we visited World Vision, and World Vision is a Christian-founded organization. Uh, it does, most of its work is done after praying. For example, it has that ethic of praying every morning before doing a particular task. So we look forward to bringing that in our organization that in case we are going to do something for our organization, we have to first pray because with God, everything is possible. Thank you. Good morning. So I'm speaking about how an NGO is registered and giving an overview about the Home of Hope organization and some of the goals that, uh, that the Home of Hope is uh, are having, like to provide better living standards for the children within the country, Uganda, uh, to improve talents, to help get knowledge for the children to be job creators and not job seekers. Uh, some of the, the organizations that we associate with are Save, Save Children Uganda and some other organizations together with the Catholic Church. So how an NGO, NGO is registered? So basing on the Basing on the Non-Governmental Act 113, amended in 2006, which governs the registration, management, and governance of the organization, they are regulated like what is needed in those, what is needed for to register an NGO. There, there must be a recommendation letter written by the LC1 chairperson. The organization should have written two sureties or recommenders. So these recommenders are people who are accepting the organization to operate. The organization should have a work plan of the activities to be carried out for, the year, for that particular year that they have started and this should also have a budget in it. The organization should have two copies of the constitution and a provision of its specifying, of its specifying the purposes for which the funds are to be utilized. The organization should also have an, organization, an organizational chart. Uh, let me complete. So I think you've been taken through how organization is registered. And I can conclude by saying, like in case you open up an organization and you're in the process of closing up the organization, you're meant to go back to the NGO board and register the closure of the, organ the organization. I think for the case of time, maybe let me end there. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are a bit, uh, I just wanted to say that we are live. Let's have the next group come in. You can just, you can just search on YouTube and say e-learning and then you see yourselves live. So we are live on YouTube. May we have the next group, please? Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. Please, let's have the next group.
We are very, very constrained on time. And remember that this is where you should come and stand. The people presenting, you stand here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Achen Weni, and uh, in our group, we're 10 members, and when we discussed, we came up with an organization that has been named Platform for Child Education. The main reason why we came up with that, because we realized that the children are the future. And then, like, according to the you both, we realized that over every year, 1.8 million children enroll for education, but not all of them are able to complete. At some point in life, they drop out, some of them become orphans, others, their parents cannot afford various reasons, so they drop out. So we came up with a platform for child education that was established in September 2018. That is approximately one and a half months ago. And it's an alliance of diverse self-governing voluntary organization, which is non-governmental. We are mainly on a voluntary basis, and we work together with a civil society in Uganda to come together to the common pursuit of the right education for the disadvantaged children. And now this organization, we do not discriminate whether the child is disabled whether you are an albino, whether anything, provided you are a child that is in need of basic education, we take you on. So our main aim is preventing further dropouts and encourages that and encourage the dropouts to rejoin. So we realize that usually after P7, especially, most children drop out because the secondary education is quite expensive as compared to the primary. So we usually take them on and continue further with them. We, we, we give them either full bursary or full, I mean, sorry, either half or full bursaries. Then the ones who can afford school fees, we provide them with all the basic needs in terms of the scholastics like books, pens. Then for the girls, there are some girls who can't afford sanitary towels. And because of that, they drop out of school. So our organization is able to provide them with that. So that is no excuse. Let me invite my colleague, Bana, to come and continue with the motor and the vision. Good morning. My name is Namaja Banadet. I'm going to take you through the motto to fight and ensure child education everyone is entitled to have education. The mission to create a fundamental and lasting change through improving the lives of the disadvantaged children in Mukono district and enhancing their education and providing them with vocational skills. It's not all about going at school, but we are also going, we are putting in place the vocational skills like tailoring, uh, and other hand skills. Then the vision to become a suitable organization and a reason for the disadvantage to stay in school and acquire a minimal, minimal requirements for employment and entry of institutions to higher education with the right choices. Thank you, let me invite my colleague Edwin to take us through the legal framework. Uh, good morning, class. Uh, um, my name is Bitambara Edwin. I'm going to take you through the legal framework for Platform for Child Education. 
Uh, it says platform for child education is primarily governed by the NGOs Registration Act, CAP 113 of the 1998, uh, which was amended by the NGO Act recently in 2006 by the Parliament of Uganda. Uh, I'll rush, no, I'll rush briefly to the Constitution. I think this is not a slide I'm going to discuss now. No. Yes, part three. Okay. I'm starting part three, part three. It's here. Membership and governance. It's here down. It's, we are going on membership and governance. Chapter three. It's here. Okay. Uh, membership and and governance within the agency, uh, platform for child education. Uh, we are saying we are non, we are non-governmental, so we are governed by the objectives. So we don't believe in membership in membership, though we have a leadership that we follow within our structure. Uh, we believe that we came up with the same objectives as members of the platform, and. Okay, uh, we go to number of board members. We said we only need, we are not supposed to be less than three or above 15. So we need from 15 members within the, uh, the agency. And here are the posts that we said within, within the agency. Members shall, the, the board shall consist of posts of chief executive director, secretary, and the clerk or treasurer. So we are saying these are the posts on the annual, after, after every year, we shall have to elect other members to fill those positions within the board of the members. Let's go to the management. The management, we have uh, the executive who is authorized to perform every duty with his or her office bearers, other officers that are going to execute the duties of the organization. So we are saying, Alternates, as number 15, uh, article number 15. Alternates, this means that in case if you want to represent, if you want to represent on the board meeting or to be represented, it means that you're going to ask a board member to represent you, but through a request, through a request, and that person is given two chances. In case we are electing or appointing any member on the board. So it means that person is going to have two chances vote for his or her vote and represent the other person. That's on uh, our alternates. If we move due to time, I have, okay. Okay, let's close by uh, uh, meet, I uh, know the last part, the last part we close due to time. The, the disclosure, let's talk about disclosure of the organization. We said, according to our interest and objectives or goals, we say if we are to close, we are going to sell off our property and or to donate this property to the similar organizations that have the same objectives and the goals of platform for uh, before we close off. Or if we sell, this money will be transferred to maybe other agencies or charitable homes or any other members that are having the same objectives and, and goals. As platform, we are saying, we believe that every, every foundation of the state, it's, it's child is education. Thank you so much. That's what we had for you people.
morning, class. My name is Mirembe Claire, and I'm part of Platform for Child Education. I'm going to talk about the facts. So according to statistics by Uganda Bureau of Statistics in 2016, 2017, approximately 1.8 pupils enroll for primary education, but only about 0 0.5 of them acquire the PLE certificate. So where do the rest go? So it should be noted that some, some don't even get to attain any level of education. So for this reason, we felt concerned to start up our organization. So why, why the rampant school dropouts? Like, why are there so many school dropouts? Child labor. Some children at a young age um, involved in child labor, like, like um, for example, they work in like quarries and has, do you know quarries? Like whereby they're told to mine like rocks, like crush the rocks. And then, death of parents or guardians. Yeah, I'm an example. I lost my dad when I was four, but thank God I'm in school. Then, ignorance of adults in some families. They don't know the importance of education. Increased divorce. By the way, divorce is very dangerous. Like, when parents break up, sometimes the children drop out of school because they're tortured psychologically. And then, yeah. Marvin? We'll continue from there. Um, good morning, members. Um, I'm still elaborating more on why our organization was established. Um, I'm going to be so brief. Um, the first point is to, pay, to fight Poverty, um, most of you know what's fighting poverty. We are going to, as I told you, I'm going to be so brief, to give hope for children so that they can maybe go back to school, those that have lost parents, so that they can gain the stability of moving on with life, being winners, not losers, giving a chance <coughs> to advantaged children who earn a good life. Okay to earn a good life. That is to say there are people who are, there are children who are talented and they're out there. They need a push, a go ahead, and you're ready to push them in any way or the other. There are people who are talented. You've seen um, street children on the streets of Kampala doing art, doing art, gaining art pictures and all that. So we are ready to boost them up. Yeah, let me call upon Fortunate for the goals and objectives. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is um, Noah Mania Fortunate. I'm going to talk about the goals and objectives uh, of the platform for child education. I'm going to talk about um, goals and objectives for plat platform for child education. Um, I'm going to talk about three because there are so many um, to, re to help reduce the level of school dropouts among pupils, especially those approaching the youth bracket, um, to create a conducive environment for the children to enable them attain better education services. Um, to provide <coughs> initiate projects that offer imperative life skills to both parents and children to help them finance education for their children. Um, to create awareness on the values and importance of children to the parents who lack interest in educating their children. To create, oh, let me finish this. To create a platform for, s for solutions to the 
to the issues hindering the youth to attain an education. Um, Linda is going to continue. In innocent, yeah. Uh, it's a uh, good morning to you all. I'm innocent, yes, sir. And I'm going to pass you through the principles, please. And these are the some, some of the principles of a uh, platform for child education. First of all, and is the professionalism, and the second one is commitment, and the third is non-violent conflict resolution. And the, and the fourth is teamwork and team spirit. We need to work together to, to, to achieve a common goal. Uh, the fifth one is gender balance and gender sensitivity. So we put on board uh, both the male and female uh, confidentiality. What is shared amongst us remains uh, with us only. And the sixth one is ratio and religious neutrality, we don't base on which gender, which race, which religion, but we, we serve all. Uh, and the eighth one is accountability. And I'm calling upon Linda to pass us through the core values of Platform for Child Education. Thank you very much. My name is Ankunda Linda, and I'm going to talk about the core values of Platform for Child Education. Uh, creativity and innovation. Here, we, when we talk about creativity, we mean like let's come up with new things. And with innovation, we're talking about let's come up with new ideas, new methods, and solutions to the problems on ground. Then transparency and honesty. When we talk about transparency, we mean let's be easy to be seen through let our actions speak for themselves. And with honesty, we talk about let's be straightforward and faithful. Then we have respect for human dignity. We have to respect everyone regardless of whatever position they hold in society. Whether you're poor or you're rich or you're needy, we, give, we respect you the same way. Then justice and equality. We should fight for justice we should treat all people equally. We shouldn't accept bribes because the rich are coming up, then we ignore the poor that actually need our services. Then re reliability. We should be able to be reliable. Like, let's be there all the time to provide these services that we are actually supposed to be providing to the poor. Um, we need to call upon Gi. Um, good afternoon, I'm Obaya Gift from Platform for Child Education. And I'm going to take you through activities and programs we carry out in our organization. First of all, there is provision of scholastic materials to the children, like for example, books, pens, um, papers, rulers, so that kids can go to school with everything they need. Then provision of sponsorship. For example, um, we can sponsor some children when they don't have tuition, so we can pay for them half, then others full, then that can't pay anything, yeah? Then sourcing bursaries for the talented and making sure they are not exploited. Yeah, for example, like let me say, in case we have people who play football, basketball, or other things, yeah? We can help them and develop their talents, and then we take them to a level whereby they can help themselves in the future. Then there is provision of basic ICT skills and other life skills to our subjects. Um, that is, for example, typing, typing minutes, um, Word, Excel, those things. Then provision of counseling services to both parents and children as regards to education and its benefits, yeah? Um, for example, we can counsel the ones that, okay, we, we already have these people, of course, that have problems and they need people to talk to, so they will need counselors, so we'll provide them with that. Um, due to time, let me call upon charity. Afternoon, I'm Charity Alina, going to talk about the sources of funds of PFCE. Well, we expect to get grants and donations from sponsors and stakeholders. We have rich stakeholders like Brian White. We expect to get 
aid from the UNICEF that gives a fair chance to every child to study, then from projects that we intend to do like creativity, like they once talked about, maybe come up with things like how to charge phones using bicycles, etc. Then the Church of Uganda is also in partnership with us. They are to help us. These are the strategies that we are going to use to achieve our objectives and aims. I'll just summarize them because of time. Sensitization. We hope to organize community meetings to sensitize the, both the parents and children about the importance of education, then outreach to families, creating youth centers and partnering with the existing Convening schools to share the counseling and career guidance seminars. Sometimes students study, but they don't even know why they're, why they're in school or what they want to pursue at the end of it all. Then bridging the link between scholarship and bursary offering organizations to eligible persons. In on conclusion, every child needs access to education regardless of where they live. Thank you very much. Um, let's have the next last group to take 10 minutes. The next group is just taking 10 minutes and we are done. Thank you very much. One of the things I want you also to consider is that many of you have very good organizations and very good presentations and very good ideas. All of your organizations are very good. If you could solidify what you have learned, solidify the presentations you have already worked on, and start organizations that would be very, very good. So I would, I'm very open to supporting you in anything you're working towards making the organization active. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm called Muhozi Edward and uh, I'll be taking through you through our charity organization. It is called Butiri Charity and Future Paving Organization for the Needy. Um, the vision, our vision is to offer better charity services and pave a bright future for the needy in Butiru, in Butiru and other neighboring communities. Our organization is from Mbale District and it is a community-based organization. Uh, we started uh, partnering with the Butiru Town Board because uh, since our organizations are community-based and we need to connect more with the community, so we decided to work with the leaders to generate uh, a good uh, partnership with the community. Our mission is to provide the uh, best charity and supportive services to pave a bright future for the needy and to improve on the quality of the community members. Here we, are, we not only do charity, but uh, we also provide life-saving skills. For example, teaching the community how to generate income through farming, through bricklaying, through bookmaking and all that stuff so that they can at one time stand on their own. Um, the objective of our organizations is to create a close relationship between the organization and the community of its operations to ensure sustainable development in the area. As I said at first, we are working with the Butiru Town Board in order to ensure that objective is fulfilled, to create self-employment projects to the beneficiaries of the organization. These are the children, the youth, and the elderly in the community. For example, community beautification, bricklaying, and all that stuff. Uh, introduction, uh, our organization was founded by Wakoli Sam, who is the founder, and uh, Mohoz Edward as the assistant director of the community, of the community-based organization. Uh, our, ch our charity organization uh, is uh, community-based, as I said before, and we work with an estimated population of around 35 households and a population per square kilometer of around 150 persons. So our, our coverage of people is around 150. Um, 
The organizational structure is uh, as follows. It is headed by the board of trustees, including uh, Wakoli Sam, the founder, and me, who's on the board. Then uh, it's uh, run by the president, him, and the vice president, me, and the executive, plus uh, the financial associates and everything. Um, how the community-based organization uh, of Buteru Charity and Future Paving Organization was formed. Uh, it was registered as a CBO, community-based organization, and according to the Uganda Registry of Community-Based Organizations, uh, there are certain steps that were taken. For example, registering with a non-government organization board, uh, there were fees that were paid. For example, the 40,000 registration fee. Uh, uh, we're going too fast. Um, the first step uh, is to go and get application forms. For example, Form A and uh, fill it as a non-government organization. Attach the required documents. For example, recommendation letters and all. Uh, valid national ID of the founders and uh, submit uh, a fully fledged board, like board members and everything. A certificate, a certificate of registration and cooperation is then issued on fulfillment of the conditions. For example, so that if the first step is done, they give us a certificate. And also, the, in addition, they give us a permit to allow us to carry out activities in the community. Uh, we also register with the district local government. For it, so we also register with the um, Bali district local government. Uh, then after uh, the, lo the local district government gives us a permit or a certificate that allows us to carry out our activities on the grassroots. Uh, the requirements of the documents include a valid reservation of its name, Butiru community and uh, two copies of the organizational constitution, which my colleague will discuss. Uh, the required documents uh, include a work plan and a budget of the first year of the organization. On top of that, our funding comes from uh, philanthropists. We also have uh, grants and donations, and also we also work with uh, the district uh, board because uh, we, will, we do more of sensitization also. So not only do we need funding, but also we need to give uh, awareness also. So that's why we work with the board also. Uh, as I said, the fees that are paid for the registration, we have the for 20,000 uh, registration. The permit is also 20,000, so the total is 40,000. If it's a foreign uh, NGO, $100 for the registration, then the permit is also 100, which makes it $200, yeah. Uh, the validity, the permit issued in the first instance is valid for a period of uh, 12 months, that is one year from the date of issuing. Uh, permit, the permit is renewable in the first instance if it's uh, valid for three years from the date of renewal, meaning that uh, the renewal is uh, three years, and the permit is given validity of five years. Uh, the process timing, there is no fixed time period within which the non-government organization board must take uh, to review and decided upon registration, and there is still no fixed time period within which the district local government Generally, the process is, yeah, generally the process is self-explanatory, but uh, our activities uh, include uh, funding, uh, giving out bursaries to schools. Uh, we work with the schools, we renovate schools also. We give scholastic materials to the students. We also do community-based activities, like teaching farming methods, giving out farming equipment, uh, providing youth skills and encouraging the community about health, sensitization, and all that stuff. So due to time, I'm going to invite my colleague
to talk about the constitution. Uh, good afternoon, members. I would like to appreciate my colleague Mohozi for the presentation. to take you to through the constitution governing our what? Our organization. So with the brief, you know, I'm going to begin whereby everything within the constitution is governed within our, co within, within, with everything we run in our organization based on the constitution that we developed before registering it, whereby the section one of our constitution, it will look about the name and the details concerning the organization and uh, the section two to look at the objectives as we explained about the organization. Uh, where we look at the section three, which looks about this organization shall not be, non or it will not be political or it should be non-political in what? In the nature, it should not be involved or interfere with the what? Governmental operations within the area of what? Its intentions. Uh, where we look at chapter four, it's going to go and the organization shall maintain a charter in the state of being neutral. It should be neutral in its operations. So when I go to the article two of our organization, we look at the membership. All persons interested in charity and paving a bright future for the needed in Utiru shall be eligible for membership subject to the approval of the board directors. Applicants must be willing to, to abide by the constitution and the bylaws must maintain any interest in the activities of the organization, initiative or initial objectives within it. Then we go to the section two of our constitution, it looks at the officers. There shall be the following officers elected annually. That should be the president, the vice president, treasurer, recording secretary, and area supervisors for the organization. Uh, when we go to this chapter, section three of our organization, qualifications for officers or people to be part of the organization. The board of directors shall consist of the executive board, chairperson of all standing committees, and other appointed committee chairpersons. So where we go to section five, article five, the section, each member of the board director will keep an accurate accounting of duties and records of yearly activities. These records will be forwarded to the incoming board of directors at the end of what? The year when we are electing the new what? Members. So the article log the organization shall have Thank you for time. I think I'll stop there. Since everything is covered within, and the PDF will be forwarded on the online staff, so we can get the details. Thank you so much. Um, I, thank you for the presentations. One of the key things is also observing that members in your different groups, you know what you're talking about. The idea that you come and you are reading through your, your slides, showing me and the team that you are particularly, maybe you're not familiar with what you're presenting, uh, tells me a lot about the preparation that I asked you. This has been almost a month of preparation. So all of that factors into the grading system. Uh, so that's it. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. We are into uh, other people's time. And uh, a big thank you to, to Mark for making this happen. And also a big thank you to all of you for the contribution and the presentation. So let's clap for ourselves. All right, that's it. Any questions?